there's a part of this world that weaves the best of East and West into one authentic tapestry. A city with a pulse, yet known for its beautiful pockets of serenity. Home to nearly 20 million people. And the largest city in China, Shanghai. You could have the best places to photograph, but the most important thing is to always have the best equipment to capture that. Now for this trip, we're relying on the new Canon EOS 550D. Trusty Digic4 processor, 18 megapixels, it's great for details. Steph, your bag. Thanks! What the Digic4 processor offers is fast processing and natural colour reproduction. It powers up to 3.7 frames per second of continuous shooting. Oh, hey, check out my really cool fisheye lens. Oh, you finally bought it, Carissa? Yes, I'm so excited to try it. For me, I just bring the essentials, an 18 to 135 mm lens, so I'm well covered. Make sure it's well protected. And we're good to go. We're at the People Centre right now. This is the definitive focal point of Shanghai, the administrative and cultural centre of the city. Certainly the perfect place to start our photography adventure. Okay. Okay, first up, holding the camera. Now this is really important because the correct grip steadies the camera and of course helps you to compose your shots more effectively. Notice how that frees up my right hand to trigger the shutter. You can also look through the viewfinder or, if you like, there is a live view shooting on the LCD. Next, click the AF button here for autofocus. What you can do is do a half press to adjust the focusing. And then, happy with that, do a full press for the shot. Very nice. Easy. Our first momentum. Very nice. I like it. And you can play back your shots this way. Look here. What I love about the 550D is how your shot will fit fully in the brilliant 3-inch wide LCD screen. 1.04 million dots. What you see is literally what you get. Now simply press the menu button if you need to adjust basic settings, such as brightness, date or time. Common features you find on a camera. Lens release, memory card slot, mode dial, on auto for now. Canon also has a new battery grip. Very useful for taking a portrait. It provides a firmer grip and the shutter release is easy within reach. Remember, practice makes perfect, so have fun with it. I love the French concession. You know they call this the Paris of Asia? It's true, I can see how photographers can get inspired here. But you know, to translate their inspiration into beautiful pictures, you do need to know the bare basics. And one of these is exposure. Exposure is the quality of light that falls onto the sensor, which captures the picture. True, photography is all about light. It makes or breaks the picture. Very true. <laughs> The 
this is not the French concession. This is 696 Way High Road, which houses more than 30 artists. Century-old building that has studios and galleries. It's very intimate. I know why we're here. Tons of windows. Tons of windows to illustrate exposure, which is achieved through what I like to call basic three. ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. Changing any one of these elements will affect the other. So, as you adjust the settings, keep the other in mind. So, Carissa, the quick control button gives you access to all these settings, right? A star. <laughs> aperture and shutter speed. How do they affect the amount of light that hits the camera sensor? Picture this. We're in a slightly dark room with a window just like this one. Now, aperture is how wide you open the window. And shutter speed is how long you keep the window open. Now, both these elements affect the amount of light that falls into the room. Have a look. Do you see that? It's very much like how light hits the camera sensor. We measure aperture in what we call f-stops. The smaller the number, say f2.8, the bigger the aperture, which means that we're opening the window wider, allowing more light to enter and hit the sensor, giving us a brighter picture. Now, if we're working with a bigger number, say F16, that means we're narrowing the opening of this window. Now, as we move from an F-stop with a smaller number to an F-stop with a bigger number, we're actually reducing the amount of light that's entering the sensor. Now, let's do a little test here. Let's say F 3.5 Okay And uh, what you can do also is to look through this viewfinder And adjust your aperture or look at it through this LCD Very nice Now the next level would be F4 So let me just adjust that Okay And there we go Beautiful. And the next thing we want to do is F5.6. Adjusting that. Okay. Very nice. So on and so forth. Not that difficult, right? ISO is easy. It simply refers to the sensitivity of the sensor to light. You adjust it using this button. Now it goes from 100 to 6400 or even up to 12,800 in very low light situations. Now, if you don't have a tripod, a high ISO gives you the opportunity to shoot in darker areas because it's more sensitive to light. Wow, now we're talking. This is my favourite part of Shanghai, the old city. You can literally feel a sense of history, but look at the hustle and bustle. All around me, the best place to play with shutter speed. Now, shutter is what's on the camera, and shutter speed is how long or how fast you like to leave the shutter open for light. This is measured in fractions of seconds. See here, 1 over 250, 1 over 500, etc. Now, just remember, the bigger the denominator, the faster the speed. That means you're choosing to close that shutter quicker. That's great for freezing a movement. Remember this mode dial here? If you're experienced, you can control your own settings and turn it to manual mode. Or if you like, you can also turn it to TV. Shutter priority, where the camera decides your aperture while you decide your shutter speed. Oh look, there's a kit. Shutter speed 1 over 125. Nice. So remember, the longer you leave your shutter open, the more prone you will be to blurred pictures. So the next time, quick action, quick shutter speed. A more dramatic effect, panning. Set a slow shutter speed to blur the background and emulate the subject's movement to keep it in focus. This takes some practice. That was a good shot for a quick shutter speed, huh? I love shooting trains. I love how they connect different cities.
Now, we already know that a slow shutter speed will help you blur anything that's moving in your picture. This time, if our friend will just keep still... Another function you can play with, continuous shooting. Just press the quick control button. See how it's on your standard single shot right now? Change this to the continuous shooting mode and press and hold onto the shutter button to take multiple shots consecutively. Sometimes we do want to capture motion in its process and the effect can be really gorgeous. But usually in such situations when we need a slower shutter speed to capture the motion of the car lights behind us, we do need to get a tripod to avoid getting that shaky effect in your pictures. For example, attach your camera on the tripod, click it left and once you hear the click, you're good to go. And one thing to remember is that when it comes to exposure, there is no fixed magic combination that will work in every single setting. It really depends on what you're shooting and the elements within that picture. To minimize any movement in your camera, you can always use the Canon Remote Control, the RC6. But remember to set your camera to the self-timer remote control mode, then just press the remote control to the camera to get your shots. This is just alright, but that's beautiful. Wow, look how beautiful it is. You know, photographers live for the morning light. Everything is so much gentler, so much more serene. Okay, come on, let's make the most of the light. Hey, if uh, full auto is when the camera decides all settings, what is P? Program AE. That's when the camera decides your settings automatically, but you can fine tune it. Okay. How your pictures are lit depends on your exposure settings. It's really all about the balance between ISO, shutter speed and aperture. But apart from the brightness of your picture, aperture also affects what we call depth of field which is basically the focus relationship between your background and your subject. Okay, quick, take my picture, take my picture. <gasps> okay, just hold it. So we have the beautiful skyline of Putong and a buddy who's constantly bugging you to take a picture of her just to prove that she's been to Shanghai. And to pacify her, we'll need to have everything in focus, both the background and your friend. We'll also need to have a wider depth of field, which is popular for most landscape shots. Alrighty, nice one. Hold it. There you go, big smile. So, set the aperture to something like f16. But f16 allows very little light onto the sensor. The bigger the number, the smaller the opening, right? So we need to balance that by adjusting the shutter speed so we can compensate for the lack of light. Let's try 1 over 30th of a second. Another one, another one, safety shot. Well, if your buddy is as vain as mine and she wants the attention all to herself, well, we need to have a narrow depth of field, not so much of the background in focus. So let's go full on on aperture, which is great for portrait shots. Now, you could decide on the aperture by turning the mode dial to AV, aperture priority, and let the camera decide the shutter speed for you. Or you could make the decision and go to manual. Okay, hang on. F 3.5 which already has the maximum amount of light coming in for this lens. So we don't need the shutter to be open for that long. Yes? 1 over 1000. Big denominator, faster shutter speed, less light. So to compare, prove your buddy's been to Shanghai. 
somewhere in the middle. Vain friend who wants all the attention. So the relationship between aperture and shutter speed is really like yin and yang. See what I mean? Quick, I want to play with lenses, please! Really? <laughs> yes, please. But please. I'm hungry. Please. I haven't had breakfast. Let's go, let's go, let's go! <laughs> Are you done yet? No, I'm just getting started. When we're on vacation, we have to shoot the local cuisine. Well, I prefer to sample the local cuisine. And you will get to do that. But first, I have to tell you about my 18 to 135 mm lens. It's one of the most fun toys you'll ever get to play with, range-wise. There are two ways in which you can use this lens to take this shot. You could set it to a wide angle and move up close. Or, you could stand further back and zoom right in. But if you want to get details up close, you could use a more specialised lens. The macro lens, which is actually one of my favourites. You know, changing lenses doesn't have to be a big song and dance. It's actually pretty simple. Whenever possible, keep your camera facing down to avoid dust from entering. When you switch the camera on or off, the sensor cleans itself as well. Hold the lens that's already on and push the lens release button right here. Give it a slight twist and it's out. Remember to put your rear lens cap back to protect your lens. If you like, you could clean your other lens with some simple tools. A good microfiber cloth, a blower, a lens pen and you're ready. Join these two red dots together, just a firm but gentle twist. Make sure you hear the click. Great, that's the sound you want to hear. Now is actually a great time to use manual focus. Because autofocus may not be able to detect what's important for you in a macro shot. This way, you get to decide. Oh, look at this! Oh hey, have you tried the highlight tone priority before? Good idea! We can use this when there are several bright areas. For example, white clothing in a bright area. With highlight tone priority on menu, custom function 6, the whites won't get burnt out. I also get to keep the details and the gradation between the dark and light areas is so much smoother. You can also play with different white balance settings. See this button here? You can set to auto white balance or choose tungsten when you're indoors under this type of lighting and daylight when you're outdoors for the most natural colours. Hey, isn't your tea already cold? Good lesson learned. If your friend is a food shooter, order your own stuff first. There's no better place to catch a glimpse of old Shanghai than through the water towns and one such place is Zhu Jia Jia. The people here move around town in boats and it kind of feels like the Venice of the East. This place is about 1,700 years old. The streets, houses and gardens have been wonderfully preserved. There are so many stories to be told here. Not bad, 
But um, notice the darker corners around the pictures? Well, these vignettes happen sometimes when we use a wider angled lens. The 550D has a great function to correct this. Lens Peripheral Illumination Correction. Just hit the menu button. Scroll down. Check that the attached lens is displayed. Enable it, then set. Yep, vignette's gone. Okay, so now I've identified a subject that I want to shoot, but he's in a distance. A 70 to 200 mm telephoto lens would be handy. But the more your lens zooms in, the more prone to shakes your shot will be. So you want to have a quick shutter speed and a tripod. One thing to note though, he's moving. And I really don't want to risk getting blurred pictures. So one useful feature for shooting a moving subject is the AI servo. That way, as your subject moves, your focus moves along with it. You know, an old town like this has so much texture, shapes, colour and vibrancy. Although some shots are better taken in black and white, this quaint little town would definitely suit that. You can adjust to your black and white mode here, or you can switch back to colour, whichever you prefer. In photography, we sometimes use what's called the rule of thirds. Framing your subject in any of these areas makes the shot so much more interesting. As you go along, take note of these framing patterns or lines. Let them inspire you to just explore. Wow, very nice. Thanks, I had time to explore. The night and its pretty lights, another photographer's favourite. Yes, and at night, during low light situations, you should use a long exposure. But chances are, you probably get grainier pictures. We can fix this, however, by reducing noise. Just select menu, custom function, then noise reduction. The perspective here is incredible. You can create visual dynamism by using our kit lens. Let's set that to the widest, 18mm. See how the perspective is dramatised? But if I zoom that to something tighter, say 50mm, you still get a great shot, but in this situation, the wider shot is a lot more dynamic. Or if you're in the mood to play, a fish eye lens gives your shot a more interesting perspective. Let me try. No, I want to shoot. Of course, you could play around with different compositions, especially when the sky and the foreground are equally inspiring. You could favour the sky, or focus on the river and houses. Mmm, both great shots. Thanks! Back 
to the city. And we've saved the best for last, the band! That one mile stretch behind me is the who's who of the business world in varied architectural styles. Have you checked your exposure yet? Oh yeah, getting right to it now. The 550D divides your frame into 63 metering zones to give you optimum exposure for all these parts of your shot according to lighting conditions. Evaluative metering which I can get from this button is the default. It's a general metering, but if I want to be absolutely sure, I can use the Auto Exposure Bracketing or AEB and that will take this shot three times. One standard, one brighter and one darker. All you need to do is pick the best out of the lot. So, now you're pretty adept at photography, huh? The 550D makes life a whole lot easier for video recording. No more browsing through a million menu options. The Start Stop button is just right here. And video recording has got its very own menu screen. So have fun, the 550D has a lot more new features. Exactly like taking a photo. You can control your settings with auto or manual mode in the menu. Also these days you hear a lot about high definition or HD, right? Well, the 550D has full HD resolution. Just turn to movie mode. Menu, movie recording size. I can choose either 25 or 24 frames per second for HD resolution because it will give a beautiful lifelike look exactly like in the cinema. There's a movie crop function. It gives your visuals seven times the magnification. This is so cool. It's a first for the Canon EOS range available in standard definition. Very useful when you can't get close to your subject. See, you really wouldn't want to miss moments like this. Where's Steph? Thank you very much, little girl. Thank you. Thank you. There's a built-in mic if you want to record sound, but if you want stereo, a simple mic in right here. Ooh, don't let me be tempted. It's okay, I have the best souvenir I could ask for. Let's go view our shots. Who needs 696 Way High Road when we have our very own art gallery here? We usually can't wait to view our pictures and that's why direct printing from the Canon Selfie Printer will be the cure for our curiosity. Just insert the SD card here, select the picture that you like and press print. Wow, I like this one. There's no way I'm missing out on this. Hey, wait for me. Anyway, one last thing for the road. Video playback is just as easy. High quality HDMI mini cable out, direct to TV and play. This is one vacation that will last a lifetime. Let the Canon EOS 550D be the start of an unforgettable journey.
delighting you always.